Welcome to our channel. On today's video, we'll be taking a drive through Baton Rouge, Louisiana at midnight, and we're going to talk a little bit about the city that is in the state of Louisiana. With over 200,000 people, it is the second largest city in the state other than New Orleans. Sadly, in the last 10 years, the city has had a 7% population decline. Most cities in the United States are having a growing population. When a city loses 7% of its population over a 10 year period, there's definitely some underlying reasons why people are fleeing the city. For one, it is the sixth most dangerous city in the country by murder rate, with a murder rate of almost 32 people per every 100,000. Only five other cities in the United States are more deadly. It is the second percentile for most dangerous cities in the country, which means that out of 100 cities, only one city will have a higher crime rate than Baton Rouge. As a state, Louisiana has some of the highest crime rates in the country in a prison system that is known to be a for-profit system. It means that in the state of Louisiana, you can be incarcerated for almost no reason at all. You would assume that Louisiana having the highest incarceration state of any other state, that there wouldn't really be any criminals on the street, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not really the case. Louisiana having the highest incarceration rate in the entire country hasn't really cleaned up the streets, which goes to show that putting people in prison doesn't really solve a lot of problems. In fact, it seems like it creates even more problems. In the year 2020, there was a 30% increase in murders in the United States, the largest increase on record, and crime rates have not came down since, which means that the streets of large cities in the United States, like Baton Rouge, are more dangerous than they've ever been before. Even famous artists from Baton Rouge, like Young Boy Never Broke Again, Boosie, Webby, and many others, have talked about how dangerous it is to return to Baton Rouge, even if you're from there. In most cities, the local artists are admired and respected, and they protect their own people who are popular and able to make it out of the streets. Unfortunately, in Baton Rouge, in the words of Boosie Bad, Everybody hates everybody, and people are hypnotized with hate towards anyone who is successful and is able to escape the trap of these streets. Most artists can say they have a lot of respect and admiration in the place they're from. When an artist is from Baton Rouge, they talk about how they need to leave there before they die. So what is it actually like to be in Baton Rouge at night? On this case, it was midnight, and we went out for a drive through the city. The humidity was very high, as you can see the lens are flared up. So we were trying desperately to go to a gas station in order to be able to clean the lens and the windshield so we can have a clear footage of the night. However, back to back we went to seven different gas stations and most of the gas stations did not have the little squeegee thing that you use to clean your windshield. This is usually a telltale sign that you're in a bad place. It means that the customers steal them or the employees are so lazy that they don't replenish the water and eventually these things get lost or misplaced. Most gas stations in America, when you pull up to the pump, you can clean your windshield. In the case of really crappy places, like I said, they either get stolen, misplaced, or the employees are just too lazy to care to replace the water, therefore they don't really exist. So despite being a city of over 200,000 people, we don't get a clear image of the night drive, we just get to see the glare on our windshield. It is my experience driving across America that when you go to a gas station and they don't have that, you're usually in a pretty crappy place, most likely they're stolen. So what happens when you actually get out of a gas station in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at night? Immediately people start screaming at you at two gas stations that I got off. I couldn't even exit my vehicle. As soon as my door opened, there was somebody in the sidelines and they were screaming things like, yo, the gas station's closed, man. Hey, yo, give me a dollar, man. I need some toilet paper, what's up? At this gas station here, there's a vehicle at the pump. There's two people sitting in the vehicle. As soon as I parked near the pump, the person that was in the driver's side got out of their seat. When I opened my door, he timed it exactly to be right in my face as my door opened. I was briefly able to just swash the windshield quickly, but the person was screaming behind me 
and he made me feel very uncomfortable. The fact that he was at the pump and he timed exactly walking out of his car to me opening my door was downright creepy. In other words, this person is a professional at just putting himself in the right place at the right time to make you feel uncomfortable and to ask you a question like, Hey man, you got a dog, we ran out of gas, man. Did I say driver? I meant to say passenger side. At the end of the day, if you're in Baton Rouge at night, you can't even get out of a gas station without somebody bothering you, harassing you, and let me mention in a very aggressive fashion. We're not talking about when you get out and there's a person like, hey man, can I please have a dollar? It's like, yo man, you ain't give me no dollar yet. What's, what's wrong? We got a problem? We got a problem? If I wasn't mistaken, they're looking for an altercation so that they can rob you. So when I drove off, I was like, crap, I'm out of here. I get back in my car, I start driving off. He hops back into his vehicle, so he wasn't walking to the gas station. He was just sitting in that parking spot waiting for somebody to get out of the gas pump so he could bother them. So obviously this person had a system going where when a car pulls up, they're right there, they're watching you open your door, and they're immediately in your face at that moment. Clearly the fact that he got back into his vehicle and didn't walk to the gas station like it seemed he was supposed to be doing shows that these people are just predators out there looking for you to get out of the gas station so they can carjack you or they can beg very aggressively. Either way, you can't even get out of the gas station in Baton Rouge at night. Pretty bad to say because we've been to places like Montgomery, Alabama, and you can get out of gas station at night. Miami, Detroit, these are cities that have a bad reputation at night, but you can get out in a very bad neighborhood and use a gas pump, whatever you're doing. For sure, somebody's going to ask you for a dollar or something, but you're not going to have somebody predatorily, forcefully just put themselves in your way like that. So I went on the internet and I made some research. I found some videos about people from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and in these videos that I found on the internet, people described it as, well, we're starving and you got money, so we should be able to take your crap because you have something and we don't. We got families to feed. We got kids that are hungry, so we're in our right to take your crap from you because you have it and we don't. And if that's the mentality of this place, it shows that there's some serious underlining issues with living in this city. What makes Baton Rouge different than a lot of these other cities in the south that are really bad is that there's actually some really fancy suburbs on the outskirts of Baton Rouge and you'll see people driving, in the case of this last trip, a white Phantom Rolls Royce through the suburbs. Not exactly sure how this wealth and this poverty are all in one place where some people have it and some people don't. But it seems like a place where you can actually run into Bentleys and Ferraris and all these wild vehicles. And in fact, in the night that we were out, there was a cloud of smoke because people were doing donuts in their vehicles. That's really expensive. Pretty much when you do that to your vehicle, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to spend another $600 on tires the next day. So while you have this poverty, people just can't make it out, can't get it done. You also have in the same place a lot of people who are flaunting a lot of wealth. And that's a very unique thing to have in a city. On one end, you have people who say that they're starving and they feel like they can take from you because they don't have it. And on the other end, you have people driving around the city in a white Rolls Royce. It seems like a very stark difference between the haves and the have-nots. I've mentioned when I travel across America that Baton Rouge is one of my least favorite cities to land in. And sometimes you have to land in a place you don't want to. You're driving across the country. You have to get to a big city before you keep moving to the next point. And sometimes Baton Rouge is that big city before you reach the next point. And while in Baton Rouge, we've had some pretty nasty experiences. Like one time we were going to check into a hotel and the person at the counter told us to wait a minute. And then they started to check in other people and other people and other people. And they made us stand on the sideline for 55 minutes until we finally got up and walked seems pretty obvious that the reason this person did it was because of a racial related motive. Now I'm not going to tell you what race they were and what race the people walking into the hotel were because I don't want to start anything like that. It doesn't really matter. But the point was that based on our race, we were just kind of pushed to the sideline and made wait while they checked other people in. And also while we were waiting to get into the hotel, a woman walked up to us and this is at a very expensive new hotel. And the woman was like, well, you by yourself, um, and I ain't got nowhere to sleep tonight, so maybe uh, you could uh, let me sleep with you. And the person that was behind the counter that had me sitting on the side was like, yeah, man, it's only the right thing to do. You got a hotel room, and she don't. So it seems like even at a nice establishment, like at an expensive hotel, 
you can have somebody trying to hustle you. So you could be at a gas station, at a hotel, even at a restaurant. Wherever you are, you're going to have to politic with these people, even though you're doing something that doesn't really require you have to politic with somebody, like checking into a hotel room. So it seems like the hood rattery of these people expands into places where you wouldn't expect it, and you find yourself having to politic through life in places where you really shouldn't have to. Quite literally, there's no respect for you as a human being. Most times when you travel to places, you get a little bit of respect. You show up to your hotel, you expect courtesy, you, res you expect respect. You know, you're putting money into their city. You you're not treated like a king, but you at least get some dignity and respect. Here in Louisiana, and in particular Baton Rouge, when you go to these establishments, you're looked at as a victim and they're a predator. If this has happened to me once or twice, I could say it was by chance, but when you constantly travel to a city and every time you go there, whether you're getting gas or whether you're checking into a hotel or getting food at a restaurant, you constantly see these things happening over and over again, it shows that there's a complete lack of respect for you as a person. And it's not a one-time thing, it wasn't a bad experience. Back to back on every single trip that we go to these areas, we end up with the same exact thing happening. So it's not you had a bad experience one time and now you hate the city. We've been through here many times and every time we come through here we deal with the same disrespect and it doesn't matter what you're doing, it's just some people that like I said in the other video, the right word is they like to impose themselves. Interesting that the dictionary definition of impose is to take advantage of someone by demanding their attention or their commitment. What an interesting definition. And in the case of, let's say, when you get out of a gas station, somebody's screaming at you, that's exactly what they're doing. They're demanding your attention or your commitment. Whereas if you're in Baton Rouge and you need to get some gas at night, it feels like you're walking into a prison and there's people yelling at you and screaming at you and just putting you on the spot needlessly definitely makes you feel very uncomfortable. In the comments section, people act like it's a surprise that this is a bad place. It's not. Louisiana has the highest crime rate, the highest incarceration rate, the large cities have the highest murder rate, it has some of the worst pollution. Every bad category from education to crime to anything you could think of, Louisiana is dead last beyond Alabama and Mississippi, which have problems of their own. It never ceases to amaze me how somebody can live in a really messed up place and think that this is normal and actually try to defend that type of situation. As if it was a surprise to them that it was like that. Look, people ask me, why would you make this video? Let me tell you why I make this video. Because somebody out there is getting a job transfer to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I want them to know the truth about this place so they don't end up in Montgomery, Alabama like I did they don't end up in a crappy place and then have to their whole entire life revolve around dealing with these types of people that are just trying to take advantage of them. And that's why I make these videos to help people who are getting transferred or having to move to understand what they're really getting when they move to a place because apparently a lot of the locals are just trying to cover up the facts, especially the realtors. They're trying to sell you a house. There's a lot of people that when you move to a city from realtors to moving companies to storage companies, all these people are making a killing when you move to their town and they don't want you to know the truth about what it's actually like there because they're making so much money off it. When a metropolitan area is more affordable, believe me, there's an underlying reason. We live in the world of internet where you can look things up or you can see things. There's no hidden gems out there of affordability. Like, I found a place in Tennessee that's affordable. No, there's a reason it's worth less, and eventually you're going to find out. And with our videos, we're trying to explain to you that there's a reason why Baton Rouge is affordable, and there's a reason why your job's trying to transfer you here, because the last person that ended up here... Well, they ended up leaving and now there's an opening. If this position was so desirable, there would be thousands of people lined up for it, wouldn't there? Is everybody in Baton Rouge a jerk? Absolutely not. We've met beautiful people here.